Hello YouTube, this is Braden with Midwest Websites, your solution for business website design and search engine optimization. Need a way to kickstart your online presence but don't have the time to learn WordPress? Just leave your project in the hands of our capable designers. We'll work with you from start to finish to put together a website you'll be proud to call your own. Link in the description below. Now, today's video is going to go over a little bit of a tricky feature with your hosting platform settings. If you've worked with WordPress previously, especially with a lot of the premium themes that are out there, you've probably noticed that there are some settings that you need to adjust in order for your theme to work correctly or in order for your theme to import its dummy data for you to start seeing where things go as you build your website. A lot of those settings can be controlled a few different ways, but the most common place that you're going to be working with them is what's called an initialization file. While it frequently goes by php.ini, it can actually go by several other different names that are listed here on the screen. Kind of a lot to take in. So before you get started with making any changes to your settings within your hosting platform, you'll want to start by making sure you know what the name of your initialization file should be. I'm on a GoDaddy shared cPanel platform for this example, and I happen to know that this environment uses the .user.ini naming for its php.ini initialization type file. Now there are tons and tons of different things you can do with one of these files. If you go to php.net, there's a whole list of these things. Fortunately, in most cases, you really only need access to knowledge about these five that I have here in my notepad. And I'll include them in the description below so that you know what you're going to be putting into the code for your file. So before we get started, we need to make sure that our initialization file actually exists in this hosting plan. So jumping back over to our cPanel here, we're going to go ahead and do a quick search for the file manager in our icons. We don't want to hit the green button for this one because .user.ini in most cPanels is treated as a hidden file. And most of these environments hide them by default. So you'll want to make sure that you click on the file manager button in the icons down below and check this box that says show hidden files so that you can see whether or not you need to create one of these once you go into the file manager. So we'll go ahead and open this up here, and sure enough, we do not have one. Our only dot file is this .htaccess file. So we're just going to create a brand new file here, and as before, if you don't know what the name of it should be, check with your hosting provider. They will be able to give you that information. So we're going to just put this in our root directory, for example, .midwestwebsites.com, which will be public HTML here. And we're going to name it .user.ini. We're just going to create a new empty file so that we can start working with this. Now, if you aren't sure what your settings are set up for before you go in and start adding code to change them, you can actually check this with a PHP info script. I'll include a link to this in the description below. I've already taken the liberty of uploading this PHP info.php. And you can actually take a look at what your server is using right off the bat here. Now, this is a lot of information to take in as well, and it's all pretty dense. My recommendation would be that you use your browser's find feature in Windows, it's Control F. And you can actually look for a piece of which term you're going to be working with. So let's say I want to know the maximum size of a file I can upload. That's handled by upload underscore max underscore file size. So if I just do a search for upload, we don't want that one. We don't want that one. We do want this one. As you can see, GoDaddy's shared server starts it pretty pathetically low at two megabytes. That's probably not going to be enough. We're probably going to need to upload something larger than this at some point during the website design process. So let's change it. As you can see here, this is set to a local value, which is what 
this website will be using and a master value which is what the server starts at by default so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing the local value which will override this master value here we're going to copy the upload max file size code and jump back over to our file manager we're going to open our empty.user.ini file and we're just going to paste this code in on the first line now you can put in more things in this .ini file as well just make sure that each direction you put in has its own line max execution time will tell your server how long it's allowed to take to complete a process max input variables will allow more variables for your server to perform a task memory limit tells your server how much ram it can use for each task at most and your post max size basically handles how much data you can send to the server and save simultaneously usually as you'll see here you'll want to have it the post max size falls somewhere between your memory limit and your upload max file size so let's go ahead and we'll just adjust the post max size as well and we'll save our changes here for now so let's take a look at our info script and see how we did i'm going to go ahead and reload it here and we'll do a search for the upload max file size first as you can see it's now 64 megabytes instead of two so now we can upload images or videos that are up to 64 megabytes in size and then we'll take a look for the post max size which is just a little ways up here it's conveniently alphabetized for us and it looks like it is set to 96 megabytes now instead of the eight we would have had if we had left it on the server's default This should allow you to overcome pretty much any hurdle that a plugin or theme is going to throw at you. And you'll be able to adopt your hosting to meet the needs of pretty much anything that you want to install. Now, you are going to be constrained by the limits of your hosting itself. As you can see, since this is a shared hosting environment, we don't just have unlimited resources to work with. We only have 512 megabytes of memory. So you don't want to necessarily raise the limits to a gig or two for everything. But you do have the ability to work within what your hosting platform can allocate. And in most cases, 128 to 256 should be the most that you need to allocate for any task memory-wise. Generally speaking, I usually like to keep it around 128. That gives it each process you're going to be doing enough room to breathe without giving it full reign to basically max out your memory and crash your website. That's pretty much all there is to it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Definitely helps the channel, definitely helps make this information available more easily to those that need it. And have a great rest of the day.